long, beautiful white gown with a champagne glass in my right hand and a microphone in the left. And I was looking out at a sea of people who loved me and cared about me. And a smile graced my face and tears hovered just on my lower lid. And I thought, I did it. I did it. You know, I had transcended the death of my dad. I had survived witnessing the ravages of my mother's cancer. And I had traversed a debilitating diagnosis. And at 25, I was like, yes, I really, I, I, I'm gonna be okay. I was married, I had someone that loved me. My heart was full. I was finally happy. That was until the underwear. Yeah, the underwear on the floor, like the underwear that somebody put there because they were too lazy to pick up the underwear and put it in the hamper. You know, you could just pick up your underwear and put it in the hamper, then I'd be happy. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> you know, we, we set these goals for ourselves and we work towards them and when we get them, yeah, I'm sweet. And then did you notice it kind of dissipates? And before you know it, it's like, it's this happiness is kind of replaced with this hollowness that kind of begs to be filled. What I notice is that when I work with clients as a life coach, I started to recognize a pattern. And the pattern was that when people were coming to me to work on a particular goal, something they wanted to achieve, or they wanted to create a change in their life, we would work on that. But then through deeper investigation, there was this, this motivation that kept rising up through the coaching sessions. And I started to see that, that what they wanted was to feel a certain way. So for example, people come to me for a variety of, of goals, and I mean, it doesn't really matter what the goal is, but let's say it's, um, they want to be more confident, or maybe they want to create a financially successful business, maybe lose weight. I mean, it really doesn't matter what it is, but what I found is we would really explore the goal and try to uncover what the motivation was. So for example, let's say that uh, somebody wanted to be more confident, and I would ask them, so tell me, what does being confident look like? And uh, they said, you know, I, I'd be able to you know, go on stage and like, like and be able to talk. And I said, yeah, but, but, but tell me more about how does your body feel? Well, you know, my, my shoulders would be back, I would be relaxed, I would be shaking. Um, I, I would be smiling and I said, okay, but how, let's just imagine you're on stage, your shoulders are back, you're rocking it. How does that feel inside? It feels, oh, I feel so happy. I got to a place in my life, some people call it a religious situation, when this strategy of constantly focusing on the outside, achieving a goal, doing things, acquiring things, being things, whatever it may be, I had I had to really be frank with myself and say, you know what, it's not working. You know, deep down inside, I had this belief, this knowing that there is this unwavering state of peace and calm. And it silently called me. It, it beckoned me home. And I yearned for its fullness. I yearned for a state of calm and satisfaction. And I knew if I was going to tap into that, I was going to have to do something different. And so I had to ask myself, you know, what is it that I'm truly wanting? And if I'm saying I want to feel happy, does that really mean? You know, you say, you know, you're either your happiness coach. I don't know, every person in here has a different definition of what that means. I have to figure out what would be the benchmarks? Like, what would need to happen?
happen for me to connect with that. And what I found is that I needed to be aligned. And aligned to me means I had to be completely present and aware. And the only time I really ever felt that way was when I meditated. Um, and for me, meditation doesn't mean cross-legged and, you know, I honestly, meditation can happen right here, you know, just being aware and present. And so I thought to myself, okay, so if being aware and present are the benchmarks, what do I need in order to gain that state of being? Because the thing was, I was done with temporary happiness. I was done. I wanted Every fiber of my body wanted that unwavering state of peace, calm, and happiness that I knew existed deep within. And so I recognized that I would have to fiercely go inward as fiercely as I had focused outward in the past towards my outside goal. And that was going to be way more than a 20 minute meditation or while I'm finding five things to be grateful for before I go to bed. Like, it had to be my life. The five things I needed to do in order to clean up the limiting beliefs and stay aligned, aware, and present. So this is just about bringing awareness to the thoughts you're thinking, the emotions that they're triggering, and the physical sensations you're having. And then the second one is that I need to be curious. So that it's one thing to be aware of what's arising within me, but then what about asking about it? You know, what do I need to learn from this? What else can, you know, have I felt this way before? Is it connected to something from my past? You know, can I see it in a different way? It's just getting really curious about the experience. The next thing is to be open. To be open to alternate perceptions and possibilities in the moment. That maybe my limited perception is preventing me from seeing alternate ways of looking at it. The next is to be honest. Because I think a lot of us in here, especially in the fields that we are, we have this pressure that we've got it right and we're doing it the right way and perfectly. But you know what? Sometimes I don't. <laughs> in fact, a lot of times I don't. And can I be honest? with the people in my life, even my clients, and say, you know what? Totally screwed that up, sorry. Because that opens us up to greater gifts and, and bigger service. And lastly, what really keeps helps to keep me aligned is to make sure that I'm always growing, I'm always expanding, or I'm intimately engaged. Because if I'm doing one of those three things, I'm connected. And maybe not deeply, like on a mountain, in the yoga position, meditating. But I don't think that that's absolutely required in real life to be, to be aligned, connected, and living life in a clear space so that you can perceive the gifts that the divine plan is unfolding through you as you. Thank you so much.